The brand new Starship Picard series airs next year and will see many iconic Trek stars reprise their roles, but one character we all know and love seems to be missing from that lineup, especially when she has a connection to series lead John Luke Picard. The first tenet of good medicine is never make the patient any worse. Hello everyone, my name is Captain Jack and welcome to Trek Central. In today's video we'll be talking about the character of Dr Beverly Crusher, more specifically the future of her character and why she's not yet in Starship Picard. There are many reasons for this which we're going to be discussing today, but before we do, let's recap on where we last saw the Doctor in Star Trek lore. In the year of 2379, Dr Beverly Crusher was serving as the Chief Medical Officer aboard the Federation flagship at the time, the USS Enterprise E, under the command of then Captain John Luke Picard. Crusher held the rank of Commander and had been aboard the Starship since its launch in 2372. One of her last missions on file was just after the wedding of Commander William T. Riker and Counselor Deanna Troy. The Enterprise and her crew were en route to Beta Z for a traditional Betazoid wedding ceremony when they were ordered by Starfleet Command to the planets of Romulus due to a shakeup in the planet's government. This government shakeup was later discovered to be a coup by the new Romulan praetor called Shinzon. Dr. Crusher discovered, while examining the new leader's DNA, that he was in fact a clone of Captain Picard. Eventually it was discovered that Shinzon had planned to destroy Earth and by extension the Federation. He attacked the Enterprise and caused critical damage to the Starship, resulting in many crew injuries that Dr. Crusher had to attend to. Finally, Shinzon and his Riemann warbird, the Scimitar, were destroyed when Lieutenant Commander Data sacrificed himself to stop the Enterprise being destroyed by the Phaleron weapon that was on board. With the conclusion of events, the Enterprise and her crew returned to Earth for major repairs and to give the crew some much needed rest. During this stop, William Riker and his new wife, Deanna Troy, left the Enterprise for Riker to assume command as the new captain of the lunar class USS Titan. The main canon lore of Dr. Crusher does stop here. In deleted scenes for Star Trek Nemesis in 2002, as well as the novelization for the film, it implied that Beverly Crusher became the head of Starfleet Medical once again, following the Enterprise's return to space dock at the end of the film. However, these scenes were removed from a final version of Star Trek Nemesis and as such, the fate and future of Dr. Crusher remains unknown. To look at what could be the future of Dr. Beverly Crusher, we must look at the extended canon of Star Trek. Take note, with a show like Star Trek Picard on the horizon, the following information could be overwritten by new canon in the near future. Just something to keep in mind. Following the resolution of the Romulus events in 2379, Beverly did indeed leave the Enterprise E briefly to serve as the head of Starfleet Medical. While on duty, she visited the planet Cavartus, where she ended up being captured by the Romulan known as Sela. Due to the mysterious nature of her capture, she was listed as missing, presumed dead by Starfleet Command. Luckily for her, Captain Picard did not believe this and managed a rescue with two of his former USS Stargazer crew members, Joseph and Carter Greyhorse. The rescue of Beverly would see her resign as head of Starfleet Medical and return to the Enterprise E, where she and Captain Picard began a romantic relationship. Beverly, come in. The following year of 2380 saw the Borg Collective launch a brutal new offensive against the Federation and other species of the Alpha and Beta Quadrants. One of Dr. Crusher's daunting tasks during this crisis was transforming her lover, Picard, back into Locutus of Borg so he could infiltrate the Borg and attempt to stop the creation of a new Borg Queen. Using her previous experience with Borg technology and biology, Dr. Crusher created an antigen that would work specifically on a single Borg Queen. Although her attempt was great, it did not work and the Borg Queen's defeat did not cease the Borg invasion. At some point during this time, Dr. Crusher married John Luke Picard and after dealing with John Luke's hesitance, they decided to conceive a son in December of 2380. The Borg invasion raged on and saw the Enterprise E being dragged into the involvement of many battles throughout the crisis due to the ship being equipped with new transphasic torpedoes. Starfleet was unwilling to overuse this weapon, therefore some of the crew in the Starship went to different methods to defeat the oppressive enemies. Dr. Crusher helped Commander Geordi LaForge, Second Officer Miranda Keota, and Security Chief Reman Konya to adapt the technology from a transphasic torpedo to the Enterprise shields and other weapons. Though it was mentioned that the ship's phases were not designed to handle the power and it might overload, causing damage. You might be thinking why a medical doctor was involved in experimental weapons for a starship, surely that would be more of a LaForge's area? Well, due to Crush's involvement in Borg biology, her expertise was needed in biological weapons against the Borg Collective. 
Now, focusing more on the relationship of Picard and Crusher, the Doctor was the only one to see the effects of a Borg's brutal invasion on Jean-Luc, and what state it left him in. As seen in the events of Star Trek First Contact, Picard has a hatred for the Borg, and rightly so. Beverly noted that Captain Picard became too obsessed with the obliteration of the Borg and wouldn't stop until that goal was achieved. This side of John Luke might be something we see in Star Trek Picard due to the Borg involvement in that show perhaps, we'll have to wait and see. In 2385, Dr. Crusher played a part in exposing the Federation President Pro Tempor, Aishan Anjar, as he was not who he said he was. Beverly was contacted by an older friend of hers, Dr. Iona Darrett, and was requested to come to the planet of Jervalen, where the Doctor had found evidence against the corrupt president. Beverly made her way to the planet via the use of a Starfleet runabout and the assistance from the Enterprise's security officers, Kirsten Kurzan and Rena Konya. On meeting Dr. Dara, they revealed that the present pro tempore was actually a Bajoran known as Bar Rodoya, who was actually a Cardassian collaborator during the days of the occupation of Bajor. Although Crusher had taken strict security measures to ensure her trip to the planet went undetected, the corrupt president eventually became aware of her presence and dispatched an elite special ops team to apprehend her and her friends. But luckily for Beverly, the arrival of Thomas Riker, yes, that Thomas Riker, allowed her to evade capture until the Enterprise E arrived following the receival of the information she transmitted. The situation with the fake President Pro Tempore was eventually resolved and concluded with eternal affairs. Again, this is a larger story for another time, which we'll of course explore very soon. Crusher would eventually serve as a temporary chief medical officer of a Frontier Class Federation Starbase, Deep Space Nine Mark II. Just for reference, this is the second Deep Space Nine, as by this time frame the previous station, which we all know, has been destroyed. More on this later. While serving as the CMO aboard the station in late 2385, Crusher would encounter Dr. Catherine Pulaski, who had arrived aboard the science ship Athena Donald. Fun fact, we recently explored what happened to Dr. Pulaski in a video, you can check that out via the description below, or in the top right corner, right this moment. Crusher would eventually return to the USS Enterprise, once again as the Chief Medical Officer of the Starship. Her extended canon mainly ends here, with a little dip into the MMO video game Star Trek Online, mentioning that she was promoted to the rank of Admiral in 2401. Again, that's Star Trek Online, so its canon kind of exists elsewhere. So that's a wrap on our extended canon of Dr. Beverly Crusher. As mentioned at the beginning of this video, I wanted to touch on why Beverly Crusher is not yet mentioned in the upcoming Star Trek Picard series. With so many other TNG stars like Jonathan Frakes, Brent Spiner, Marina Sirtis, and now Jonathan Del Arco returning, why isn't Gates McFadden reprising her role? Now I have been doing some digging surrounding Gates McFadden and her potential return to Star Trek through the new show with Patrick Stewart. Most of what I can find is in 2018 to 2019 appearances, where she and other cast members including Frakes, Spiner, and Sirtis with a mention they had not yet been asked to appear in the show. Obviously we now know this isn't the full truth, and therefore those actors were most likely under strict NDAs not to talk about them returning, obviously. But what about McFadden? She stayed relatively quiet on this topic and has not mentioned anything since those appearances. Star Trek Picard takes place in 2399, 20 years after the last canon appearance of the Next Generation crew in Star Trek Nemesis, 2379. So as far as we know, the character of Dr. Beverly Crusher is still serving on the USS Enterprise E. Now we explored the extended canon and came to the same conclusion, Beverly really liked that ship. One thing I want to mention is her relationship with John luc Picard. The relationship between these two characters is explored throughout their time on screen in The Next Generation and the follow up movies. Now we learned in the extended canon that the authors chose to take this further, with the two eventually marrying and having a child, yet it seems Star Trek Picard might ignore that. Not that this is a bad thing, as it purely comes down to how the story would be affected by that but one of the stories sort of based off of this topic. Stick with me here, as we're going to dive into the theory part of this video. We know that Picard is at a loss in the upcoming series. He's not feeling too good, and therefore he walked away from Starfleet soon after being promoted to Admiral and leading his rescue armada, which we heard mentioned a couple of times now. According to the series teaser and trailers, the unimaginable happened to John Luke, and that is the reason he left Starfleet. Now many of us believe that the unimaginable event mentioned is the destruction of the planet Romulus, but what if it's something else that's closer to home? To Picard, from a young age he was taught about the great Picard family, but he left continuing the family line to his brother Robert. However, after Robert and his son René's deaths, he felt that he had let his family down by not being able to continue the family line. 
Beverly and their relationship represented a family aspect for Picard. My theory is, what if this unimaginable event that caused Jean-Luc Picard to leave Starfleet and his decorated career behind was the death of someone he loved, perhaps his wife or by extension his family? Think about it. It's going to throw out a bigger line here, but say this event might be the destruction of the USS Enterprise E, as we don't see it mentioned or seen so far, so that ship could be destroyed. Looking at Crush and Picard being in a relationship, and she suddenly killed or lost during a mission, it would drive Picard away from Starfleet, I think. Now that's my speculation for today. It would be a bold move by the writers to kill off a well-known and much-loved character like Dr. Crusher, but you already know Star Trek Picard will explore the past through the use of flashback scenes so we could see a flashback to the scene in this event. For now, we'll simply have to wait and see until the series airs in 2020. If you have any theories on where Dr. Crusher might be, let us know down below in the comments. That's it for our video today. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and let us know your thoughts via the comment section below. Should you want to stay up to date with the latest Star Trek news, lore and more, then make sure to subscribe to Trek Central here on YouTube. You can also check out our brand new website, follow us on social media, or even join our community Discord server via the links in the description. For now, I've been Captain Jack, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.